Okay, so we are doing the Corona Wisdom Chat, the 21st of May. And at the moment there is Aline, Ulrike and Heidi. And we have decided to speak in English also. Ulrike and me is German and Aline is, what is this, Elsass? You came from the Elsass? Yes. So, so <laughs> you yeah. have, you yeah. had German at least parallel, no? Ja, ich kann Elsässisch reden. Das, das kommt noch schneller. <lacht> okay. Aus Hochdeutsch. <lacht> Oder ich kann ein bisschen Schwitzkirtisch reden. <lacht> okay, good. <lacht> so let's keep on, on English so maybe the others who, who are English speaking then they could understand it better. Okay, we had a very nice talk on... Um, Saturday with Ella and uh, Griselda and we really went deep so I'm wondering where we go today. So let's do a check-in and then we see where we go. You want to, uh, Aline, you can use then three or four, four languages, French, English, <laughs> Switzerland and Alsace. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, starting from just now, I just came back from grocery shopping, you know, and uh, I find it exhausting now to go grocery shopping. You know, I used to like to go out, you know, to get out of the house and just, you know, people walking around with a mask and uh, it's just, just not a pleasant experience, you know, and um not everybody wears a mask, neither do I. When, uh, when it's obligatory, I wear it, but otherwise I'm not because, you know, I, I am of the opinion that the sooner we all get exposed, the sooner we develop antibodies and the sooner it will be better for everybody. So that's kind of my position on it. And um, the, uh, the other thing about this whole topic is... I was listening, or maybe maybe that's just my check-in, and then I can tell later the other okay. stuff. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Ulrike, you go next. I will uh, just put some more light on me. Oh, oh I can do it here, maybe. Uh, it's not yet. It's behind the light, you know. But I wanted to sit on the sofa all the time on my on my desk. Mm -hmm. I get my butt squeezed. <laughs> okay, Ulrike, up to you. Well, it was quite nice out today. Um, we have a we have a holiday actually. It's Ascension today. Yeah. No shops are open, and um, I hadn't realized that when when um, when I agreed on on meeting on on Thursday. Um, I don't know when I'm here. I'm I'm in the countryside. When I'm private, uh, it's always not so easy to cut out um, an hour or two in early evening. So, um, beside a very bad headache, which I had since this morning, uh, whatever uh, that's from, uh, weather is very nice, and and we took all our um, plants from indoors on the balcony so that was quite quite heavy work actually and I constructed a roof for my tomatoes because you know tomatoes don't like cold rain and even in summer we do have cold rain sometimes so um, I was kind of practical and I'm kind of tired <laughs> And uh, actually, I'm I'm not so much set for this kind of meeting and talking about Corona again is is really not not on my mind. <laughs> anyway, we we did too much of that on Thursday uh, on on Tuesday already. Uh, even though uh, we took longer time and then um, kind of came to conclusions that um, kind of fit my mindset. So I hope you're well. And Heidi, I'm, I'm, I really, uh, it, it's so amazing that you do these talks uh, all the time. <laughs> I like to talk with people. 
And yeah. you know, Corona might be only the, the setting that we are in times of Corona, but it doesn't mean that we have to talk about it all the time. You know, I, I, I don't think we need to. <laughs> so you talk about what you think is right. I have here this guy. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Sheaf Maul. He, you see he has a, a distorted mouth. Oh, what happened? I don't know. I found him when he was very little and he had this. Uh -huh. And obviously he had, he also has no tail, you know. He um, obviously had an, an encounter with a car. Accident. He was like, you know, like my hand. So, and I brought uh. him to the veterinarian and she fixed him somehow. Mm -hmm. the jaw. Now he has these teeth coming up, you know, like this, but he is eating a lot and uh, has no problem. So that's good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> my day, I just went before I came here, I just went to the to my vegetable garden, it begins to be really nice. The tomatoes are already like like this and have flowers. The first tiny little zucchinis are there. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> and the salad begins. Uh, so far I ate from the salad, either the plants which, which sort of die because they are mm, bugs who are eating the roots and then they do like mm -hmm. Or I take the outside leaves. I haven't cut a whole plant yet, but they are beginning to be very nice. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but I enjoy it. So that's good. And during the day, I, I was sitting a lot on computer, making appointments and uh, uh, doing web pages, uploading to YouTube and then thinking, oh, what, what, what still? I did so many talks lately, you know, what is still to do? Because I'm really not able to, to write things down, you know, it must all be in my head and then I have to remember. So I just can't, can't follow um, a plan or a schedule, a, a list, you know, every now and then I try to do a list and then yeah, it's hopeless. So, <laughs> <laughs> I try not to forget things. And when I have appointments like this, I have, uh, put that in the the alarm clock and the um, cell phone so that 15 minutes before I, it would ring like crazy. So I won't forget it. <laughs> but I'm fine. It was good weather today. Um, a little windy, but nice uh, at the same time. So, And it finally rained on Tuesday. So it's fine. So far, my check-in. And then we go where we want to go. Well, let's talk about gardening since you both brought <laughs> this up. It'll be a little bit more refreshing than the other topic, you know. And um, I, in Canada, we are probably two months behind you in, yeah. in, uh, in Europe, you know. And uh, I have seeded, I am experimenting with winter gardening because last, um, last uh, February I was in Peru and I had an ayahuasca experience. I had three actually, you know, and my very first one was like I experienced going through ice ages until the beginning of time. It was like a very weird experience. And the message was, you must prepare for the next ice age, you know? So it's like, for me, it was like, I really took this gardening thing seriously at that time. And who knows, you know, whether we'll have an ice age first uh, heat and then ice age, usually it's like this, you know? And so on my experiment, I have um, eight growing lambs. So I've grown things indoor. And yesterday I put my tomatoes, they are, you know, they don't have any flowers, but they are about that high, you know, so I put them in the garden. I have zucchini, I have uh, some squash, I have uh, cucumbers, I planted, I seeded corn and beans, and I have little plants of, um, what do you call this, peas, snap peas and, uh, and green peas, which I've also planted yesterday. So um, I have about, I don't know, 50 pods of garlic that are gonna be harvested early, early July that I planted last fall. 
-hmm. and I have probably another 50 little little tiny things coming out of of onions that I have to now plant you know they are in those growing boxes you know where you they start to come out and now I have to put them out in the in the garden so that's my task today and Every day I spend at least two or three hours, but when I come home, you know, when I'm coming in, I am really tired. It's mm -hmm. like, man, I'm no longer 20. I really noticed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even, even just three years ago, you know, I, I was not getting as tired. I was doing as much, but not getting as tired. So I need to lie down more often after I just do my gardening. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Uh, so you have, uh, you are already planting outside in Canada? Yes, 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 yes. You can. Uh, normally, um, it's after the last frost and by the end of May, you know, after the 24th, which is on Monday, but now we have no frost coming up for the next, for, it's finished now, you know. Still about eight degrees at night, it goes down, you know. But during the day, today, I think it's 18, 20, you know. So you are not much behind us. So not really. How is it in, in, in Germany, Ulrike? Uh, we had frost um, last week. Um, it was the ice heilige, mm -hmm. you know. And, and we had frost the 15th, right, right on time, <laughs> what, what the calendar says. And uh, since then, it's it's hot and um, pretty good. We had a couple of cold colder nights, but uh, since yesterday or day before, um, I think we can leave the tomatoes outside. Yeah. So it's still working the old farmer's calendar. Yes, that's it's, good. Am it's amazing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I had been experimenting with growing herbs indoor and I put them out a little bit too early. Most of them I'm lost, you know, because mm -hmm. we had some minus two, minus three uh, and, it's, mm -hmm. and uh, I should have covered them because mm -hmm. I had put uh, a Swiss chard and, um, and what is it, the kale, you know, out, but mm -hmm. I had it under, under a cloak, you know, I had it covered. So that didn't freeze. And kale doesn't really freeze, you know, like you can leave that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But indoors, do you have a, a, a glass house or something? No, no, I have a shelf, you know, one of those Ikea shelves and I, mm -hmm. and I attach my growing lamps. So during ah, the day, with I lamps. the light oh, on, lamps. with the light, you know, I have, I have eight of them, eight lamps. Uh -huh. That's the reason, because I put that near the windows and then they go all, you know, in one direction and don't grow very well That's inside. Right. That's what I did the other years. This is my first year with experimenting with the growing lamps. Ah, okay, good. Making adjustments, you know, so that mm -hmm. I, can, I can start to... And what I'm learning this year is like, I have to start way earlier, you know. I have to start in February to, mm -hmm. to plant things indoor. Mm -hmm. Then, um, you know, I think I started... Um, mid-March, early March, you know, and I could have started the months earlier and then by now, you know, it would be bigger, you know. Yeah, I started when the corona came around and I thought, oh, who knows how uh, the things will go during summer if we still have stuff to buy in the, in the supermarket. Yeah. So better, when you have the land, it's better that you are prepared, you know would Absolutely. be stupid not to do it. So mm -hmm. that's when I started. So a little bit late too. And then I think I had, it, it says it is organic um, soil in, in plastic bags. No, I bought that for the little pots. But I think there is something wrong with it because they come out and then they stay like this. They don't, some of them die and some just don't develop. So I had an experience like this last year, you know, Mm. I, I usually get a ton of earth delivered, mm. uh, sometimes two, usually two per season, you know, to, to mm. put in the garden. And last year I found some company that was delivering a ton of organic soil. And I started a raised bed in the backyard with that soil and nothing grew, nothing grew in it. Nothing Science. grew. Yeah. So, 
on Saturdays, I'm going to a farmer's market. So I kind of asked the farmer, you know, like who, who is there? I said, you know, what could be wrong? He said, you have to put some cow manure, composted cow manure in it to kind of enrich it because it's probably sterile. You know, they've kind of made it organic, nothing, nothing, you know, like, I don't know exactly how they do it, but I had this, uh, this experience. Well, then you, you put some worm casting, you know, some, something to kind of create life back into bacteria life in mm-hmm. there. But you think when you do, when you, it even costs more, no? When you buy yep. that, then you, it's fine. And instead it doesn't work at all. That, that's my experience last year. So now I have this, you know, like, a, I think it's 60 kilos or whatever, a huge bag of, of that medium, you know, that uh, potting, potting soil, you know, like that has coconut, uh, whatever, you know, and little white things in there to kind of oh. keep the moisture. And uh, I'm using that for grow, for indoor growing. But I noticed when, when the pot is too small, it goes to a certain point because it has used up the, um, uh, the fertilizer or whatever, uh, whatever was in the, in the soil. So you have to either transplant it in something bigger, which I've done with my tomatoes this year. I transplanted them in, in, in bigger pots, you know, and now they are in the ground outdoors. You know, so. mm-hmm. And Ulrike, you, you grow the tomatoes or do you buy the plants? No, I bought the plants. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I don't have space to, to grow them indoors. Mm-hmm. So I, I do buy, buy the plants. Yeah, I mean, I we, we take them indoors, you know, at night um, uh, for maybe one or two weeks, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I can't start in February. <laughs> Plus, you know, I'm, I'm um, transmuting from the city to the countryside and, and uh, um, can take care of, of things every day, you know, so. Yeah, you need to be there then every day because otherwise it doesn't work. Yeah. 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 Well, it's a lot of work, you know, to kind of plant your, grow your own stuff is a lot of work. But it's also satisfactory. I like it to see when it's growing and then I'm getting angry on the, on the weeds, you know, and then (laughs) I observe my angriness. And then when they go out with a long root, I'm really happy. (laughs) You know, the, the, the weeds, a lot of those weeds you can eat. Yeah. I'm eating dandelions, you know, the, uh, yeah, the yellow okay. flowers, you know, I'm, I'm making salad out of it before they, they started in flowers. And uh, yesterday I, I picked something else that is also a weed, but it looks like you can cook it as a spinach. And last year I experimented also with uh, leaves little leaves that looked like spinach we ate it it was a little bit bitter but we didn't die you know <laughs> later on later on it was it was a flower so we ate the flower leaves you know it's like i saw so there's so much you can eat yeah outdoors, yeah you know and you can eat a lot of flowers too i have capuccina grass yes and i yes. eat eat that too yeah yeah. And um, yeah, no, I'm talking about grass, the grass with these nasty long roots, you know, which is ah, uh, yeah. uh-huh. Raminia. I don't know how it is in English. It's, it's really horrible grass. And is I prep- crab, crab grass? I think there's a name like this, you know, like. I don't know. Actually, it is, you can use it as a, as a med- medicine uh, uh, plant, but it's sort of the, 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 the roots are sort of white and grow you know like this like meters and it, there are many ways i saw it in the book that you could use it but in the garden when i want to grow other things they overgrow everything you know and uh, so before mm-hmm. i dug up the whole place where i have the garden now and took out every piece of these roots you know that wow. was a big big work <laughs> So what do you know, Ulrike, about um, medicine, herbs in, in, the, in the country or in the garden? Oh, um, the, the Spanish kind of um, uh, plants uh, that have white, white uh, flowers, we do eat them too. 
um, the, the young leaves, um, they are called, it's so dumb, you know, when I speak English, I can't remember the German words. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll, I'll think about that. But I, I do go and collect herbs. And um, um, just lately I read, and <laughs> back to Corona, uh, that Artemisia uh, is something that is good against Corona and against viruses. Um, and, you know, you use it like when you eat fat uh, stuff, like, you know, Christmas, uh, Christmas. Um, Artemisia. Who's, what? Artemisia, yeah. What is it in German? Uh, das ist um, yeah, Beifuß. Ah, I don't think it's growing here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I think it would, but uh, maybe, I don't know. I have to look for it. We use it for the goose for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, but if you use it as tea or, or to inhale, um, it would cure any any lung disease. Oh, okay. Mm. And especially ki kill it would kill the cells that are affected by viruses, mm -hmm. and when not the other cells. You know, it, it it's it's really really a healing plant. Uh, mm -hmm. By inhaling. Yeah, if you want to have it in the lungs, otherwise you mm -hmm. you um, have tea or or. I have the pills. Um, I bought pills in a certain moment. I think still when it was for Mark or so. I think mm -hmm. so. Uh, so it's, it's good, against, uh, good against cancer. It will kill all the cells that are not healthy. Yeah, but it was too late in the case of Mark. Yeah, you know, you have course. to start, yeah. start mm -hmm. a little earlier with these things. Yeah. Okay, that's a good to know. I will have and, a look if I find it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, as I walk the dog around here, uh, I would see the plants and um, like at the end of June or uh, beginning of July, well, just before they start blooming, you, you have to cut them and, and uh, store them. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, my husband would help because, you know, he loves uh, Christmas goose. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we use it for that and, and for ducklings and stuff. Um, and, you know, we were carrying this and it smelled so strongly and I was so hungry for goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the habit, no? Yeah, middle in the, in the middle of summer, actually. Yeah, but it was, it was fun, you know. I, I, like, like here in the countryside, I have herbs hanging around uh, all year, you know. Yeah. And if I want to make tea, you know, I would go and cut um leaves from the different bundles yes. i i i noticed that i mean all the plants which have a rosette like dandelion and um, many other things chicoria here you can mm -hmm. eat everything you can eat gänseblümchen no uh, mm -hmm. uh, everything and i also uh, understood that it's um you can eat Wegerich, I don't know what that is in English. Yeah, it's, it's good against, um, against the cough. Oh. Yeah, and then they say, uh, I haven't co collected it yet, that the seeds uh, have very much protein. So you could oh, okay. use it in, in the muesli or where, whatever mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. to, to put it in. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you can eat it also like vegetable. Mm -hmm. And um, even you can eat alfalfa, uh, which uh, is growing yeah. on my mm -hmm. on my grass. It's not has no particular taste, but you know, I was thinking, you know, if times come really bad, what can we eat on this ground? You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that says that is my position. Also, experimenting right now is whatever grows in the backyard to test it. So I know, exactly. you know, what can be eaten. Exactly. I did seed last year instead of grass the uh, alfalfa you know like uh, mm -hmm. those little three leaves you know that's what it is right that's yeah. uh, the alfalfa the alfalfa yeah. is this it goes higher a little bit they use it yeah. for hay here yeah mm -hmm. yeah and and that is is a good replacement for grass you know when then you don't have to cut the grass anymore yeah 
Yeah. You just have this, you know. I have one area. I mean, I have, last year I didn't even have to cut my grass at all. You know, I was just leaving it wild, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. because I love the wild. The, yeah, I yeah. cannot leave it. Uh, that's every year the preoccupation because of the danger of fire. So I always have to cut the grass because mm -hmm. when you have high grass and whoosh, wind comes, then it's, it's you know, mm -hmm. too dangerous. Uh, alfalfa is good also for, you know, preparation of the, of the fields and so on. But if you uh, put it, for instance, near olive trees or something, they would compete for water because mm -hmm. alfalfa goes very deep and gets water everywhere. And so the plants around don't get it anymore. So it's not so good to have it in the middle of the garden. While I think other clover plants you, you could put there, but not alfalfa. They say it's up to 10 meters uh, that the roots go down. Wow. That's why in Italy, in summer is everything brown, like in Germany in winter, no? But the fields which have alfalfa are wonderfully green because yes. they, they have enough water, yeah. Mm. That's good. And the other uh, or, uh, plant is oregano, you know? That's, mm -hmm. uh, that herb is also a healing yeah. sage, sage, thyme, you know, all yeah. those things. I know, I have them. some here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I have drops of, um, of uh, thyme, which are very strong, and I, I do gargarism uh, with it for, because regularly in winter I have a cough. I think it's because of the fireplace and so on. And then the mm -hmm. end of summer, I don't have coughs anymore. <laughs> but uh, with this, it seems to, to help. That was um, a healer also. She, she came to see me about two or three years ago and she brought it as a gift to me. And I tried it out and I found it. So it's, a, sen it's a central oil, what you tell me? Thymian, yeah, oil mm -hmm. from Greece. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, whenever I have a cough or anything, beginning to feel something, I just take oregano oil. Mm -hmm. Oregano oil, you know. Oh, I think, is it oregano or is it thymia? I don't know. I've forgotten. One of those. <laughs> yeah, but both, both work well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I guess it's, well, if it's from Greece, Greece, it no, might it's, be. It's bought in Germany, uh, but I, I think mm -hmm. they... they they have it from Greece. I bought another one on Amazon here. Uh, seemed to be the same, but it's not so good. I, I, I didn't like it. So I ordered this one, which cost twice or three times as much mm -hmm. from Germany, and it's better. But when you have, you put only one drop in a glass of water, and when you mm -hmm. have it inside, sometimes <laughs> you know. it's very strong. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's good. Disinfection natural mm -hmm. disinfection that's okay. by the way you know all this uh, polemics against uh, natural uh, healing methods with uh, in cor corona crisis i do think that there are some people who try to, to to earn money with stuff you know but i don't really hear a lot about prevention about taking vitamins about you know all these things which you can do to boost your uh, immune system. Some people talk about it, but in mainstream, I don't really no. hear that. You no, know? They, make, they make fun of it. Yeah, but they, are, they are crazy. I mean, yeah. we know, yeah. we, we should know that immune system is uh, important, you know, and that you can do something to, to improve the immune system. And I find it a, actually a crime if a doctor don't tells you, doesn't tell you uh, that's uh, that uh, you can prevent many things or help yourself to, to, to heal with uh, uh, these things like vitamin C. I mean, this is not a, that's not a, a, a mystery that we know for hundreds of years, don't we? And yeah, but they, they learn about diseases, not about health. That's right, exactly, yes, yeah. And, you know, like this whole polemic about the vaccines and, the, and, and vaccination in the U.S., you know, it's not as bad here in, in, in Canada. And I don't know exactly how it is in Europe, you know, 
But um, children less than two months old already have 22 vaccines. And by the time they are teenagers, they have had 79 shots of, of, of vaccines, you know? And uh, what I've recently learned is like doctors, pediatricians, they actually get paid to vaccinate. They, they, they get paid by the pharmaceuticals to boost vaccinations, you know? It's criminal. It's, it is, you know, like it's, we, we are living in a time right now that so many people don't know, you know, because it's, this is in the US, but usually when it starts there, you know, those companies have their fingers in all, on all the continents. And they, uh, you know, they try to kind of, uh, import yeah. those those things, you know, in uh, in in other countries. So it's important that we know about those things. I think you yeah. know, so that so that we can we can be vigilant and and not and and question what a doctor tells yeah. you, yeah, you yeah. know, and remain remain to keep our free will to refuse this is so important you know not that we are forced to take a vaccine at one point i know? i'm not completely against vaccines i think there are cases in which it's is important and has been important in the past yeah but yeah, to, to, to try to avoid every little thing by by putting in a vaccine and having the risk then when it's really i think when it's severe illnesses I, and and they are sort of, um, you know, like um, how was it uh, polio and and like pox and things like that. That's I think it's fine, you know. But for every little thing, and for the normal flu, you should get vaccines, and the doctors normally shout, shout when you don't want it. And Ella, you know Ella. Uh, she I went to her doctor now. Uh, her doctor said when she didn't want to have vaccines, she said, oh, I give you this instead, some homeopathic things and so <laughs> And you know, that's an exception if an official doctor tells you these things and yeah. accepts that you don't uh, take um, these things. And I, I left my doctor, my normal doctor, I almost never go there. But anyway, there I uh, went one day because I needed some some prescription for I don't know what, maybe even for the cat, and I don't know what it was. And uh, I had a day before or two days before a tick a bite, and I had taken it out, but the head was uh, remaining inside. And so it was, um, you know, red. And I thought, okay, that was in a place where I couldn't really see a lot. And so I asked him, when I'm there, please, could you take it off? And so he took it off and then you have to take antibiotics. I said, what? Antibiotics? Yeah, yeah. And then he shouted on me that if uh, I'm always against and uh, I will see if he really tried to make fear. I will go to the hospital half dead and things like that. And I said, hey. And I, I did, I think before or afterwards, it's, it's the same. But I did the research that in the zone in the area where I live in Italy, there is no, no uh, danger of that you get some severe, it can happen once in, he said he had five cases, he is uh, over 60. So in his time of 40 years of being a doctor or 35 years or something, he had four cases or five that they, they got inflamed and then something came out. I mean, the probability is zero, you know, that you get it. And I went to him also and I told him that I have problems with intestines. And then he tells me I have to take an antibiotics. I said, Ma, are you crazy? That's again that, you know, I tell you what the problem is and then you create me another problem, you know. But he was really so, so authoritarian then I said I won't go there anymore and then Ella told me that her doctor is at least recognizing uh, homeopathy so it's not completely on the on mainstream uh, uh, medicine so I went there and yeah 
and I just did a check up, a complete check up, but I'm sort of fine. And uh, I, since then, I never went there again. <laughs> it was last year in November. Mm -hmm. I don't go to doctors. If, if I have a cold or um, throat ache, which this year I didn't have yet, then I do this old method, cold water and uh, cold, cold Halswickel, kalte Halswickel, cold um, imp wrap, imp wrap, wrap. <laughs> yeah, and wool uh, around, and and then in in a few hours or maximum two days, it's gone. You know, and vitamin C, a whole um, spoonful or two spoonfuls, even in these cases, you know. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I always had the experience when I still went to school uh, to 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 Rome to the German school, and every, I did uh, lessons, uh, singing lessons, and everybody, <laughs> and I said take vitamin C, they don't, they don't, they don't. They prefer to have two weeks of, and whenever I actually got a little bit of that, it was maybe two days, a little bit of something, of a throat ache or something, and they were at home two weeks in bed like this, destroyed, but they don't want to hear it. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I can't understand it, actually. <laughs> That's my rant. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Elaine. Um, you talked about this. Was it a dream that you had when you were in Peru? No, it was a, about the ice age. No, it was uh, you know the, the the sacred plant, the the, the ayahuasca. How do you call it? You know. Like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. a it's a root. You know, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I have always wanted, you know, to to experiment with okay. it. You know, like yeah. I, I have never taken any drugs, you know. Like mm -hmm. uh, yeah. maybe once somebody gave me some something that you know, but I I've not been in that in that thing. But I've done some some shamanism, you know, and uh, training, and that it's known, you know, okay. like it, yeah. it's it's. Uh, the plant speaks to you, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. Okay. So when when I turned 70, my, my daughter said, what, where do you want to go? I pay a trip for you, you know, like, uh, hey. I said, I want to go to Peru and I want to experience Ayahuasca. So <laughs> it was clear. So we went to Peru last February, you know, and, uh, you know, we, we were in the jungle for a week, you know, and we had three of those experiences. She didn't have such a positive experience then. But for me, it was, it, it was very, you know, like, yeah. I, I got what I wanted, you know, so. Yeah, good. good. good, yeah. good. Um, when you talked about the Ice Age, I thought um, it, it could be uh, just a picture for, for something that is like Ice Age. You know, like maybe isolation or um, like uh, some medium predicted um, big floods in Germany um, for the summer. And floods could stand for depression, like um, economic mm -hmm. depression, mm -hmm. right? So um, this ice, ice age could be um, something different. I don't know if you can think of something that, that uh, could be... Um, the the picture for it stand still something like standing still like freezing no and the world was standing still yeah mm -hmm. and the di dinosaurs died you know so maybe maybe it's the big companies that may die you know mm -hmm. that would be good yeah they yeah. you know they my experience like the way i experienced it was like you know this it, something changes when you take this substance you know and i was yeah, very cold you know mm -hmm. so i was actually freezing you know in the middle of the jungle you know where it's not <laughs> cold you know so i kind of i had this vision of moving back in time you know through all the ice ages like as as a as having incarnated before you know that was my experience uh, okay you know? okay yeah interesting yeah. 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 So that that was just my experience, you know. Like, but you know, like, yeah. plus also, you know, I've done some l listen to many documentaries about, you know, like when when you when you test the uh, 
the ice caps, you know, the, the, the cones of the ice, you realize that there's regular changes in climate, you know, throughout millennia. And um, you have usually when, when there has been an increase in temperature, there is also sometimes followed by uh, an ice age, you know, like so. So that is kind of, it kind of made sense to me because we are moving into that, that global warming, which is actually a, a whole, not only our planet is moving, but the whole solar system is actually heating up, you know. I was actually listening yesterday, I, I was in a, in a class with David Wilcock, Ascension mm -hmm. Mysteries, and um, he, uh, he had two, two shows on Gaia, Gaia TV, which I had followed for years, you know, where he had already started to talk about those things. The, uh, the, the showing pictures of all the, um, all the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, you know, like Mars, Venus, and how they are all heating up for the last uh, 10, 15 years, not only the planet Earth, you know. So it is because we are moving into a zone of our galaxy where there's an increased electromagnetic kind of energy, you know, that is heating up the, the planetary bodies. And of course, we are affected by it. And it will probably also affect our consciousness, you know, there could be this rising of consciousness during that phase also happening. So, so Arlene, don't say that because they call you Klimaleugner in Germany. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't care less, you know, I couldn't care less. I think it's no. a reality, you know. Yeah, it's I think so too, but, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't um, say that we should continue to... Of to, course not. To, That's to, not what I'm saying. No, exactly. But <laughs> that is normally what the, what the people combine. When you say that climate change is a natural uh, thing, they immediately tell you, uh, then you are for fossil fuels. Uh, and no, this is, of not. I, I know, I know. I just, no. I was, I was it, joking when I said yeah, that. No, 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 I know. It was not, no. uh, I mean, <laughs> most of the people don't know about that, you know, yeah. that all the planets are heating up and that we're moving into that zone, that frequency, you know. And he, he went into sacred geometry explanation. I mean, it was very fascinating. I mean, his classes are five hours long. So I just came out of one yesterday, you know, and uh, everything is like, uh, you know, he explains everything through the, uh, the dodecahedron, the, 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 you know, the, the, the all the, the, the sacred geometry, the triangle, but the, uh, what do you call them when they have, when they have sides, you know, like, and the, the, uh, uh, the octahedron, dodecahedron, mm -hmm. you know, all those, all those names of those, uh, of those things. And every, every planet, you know, we're all moving, you know, we are, it's constantly moving, but the whole solar system and the whole universe is also moving around a, a sacred geometry form. I, I don't know how to explain it, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've been listening to his lectures, but for me to start to explain it in, in a sense that, in a, in a make, in a sense that yeah, that's, I, I that's clear. be able to articulate it correctly, uh, I'm not pretending even, you know, but it was really, it gives you like another understanding of what's going on, you know, and I think that is important, you know, for me at least, you know, like. Uh, I think it's important that we do recognize that there are other reasons than the, what the mainstream is saying. You know, and without immediately going into uh, uh, into uh, conspiracy theory things, you know, mm -hmm. for me it's uh, today this fight uh, of one truth against conspiracy theories that doesn't make sense to me at all, and I find it very polarizing and very unhealthy. So, mm -hmm. in my opinion, uh, we need to, uh, that's why I listen to these things, to all these things, you know, but also to mainstream things. We need to have as many perspectives as possible. Yes, absolutely. And then uh, know that the truth is somewhere in between. No? And uh, what I see is uh, theories like yours, as I said, you will be called um, 
climate, uh, climate uh, denier, mm -hmm. and then you will put in a certain alt right or something, you know, in a certain mm -hmm. box. And this is so unhealthy. This mm -hmm. this political uh, heat up. Uh, it's really for me. It's horrible. But I do think we need to do something for for uh, having ver veramente, now it's Italian, uh, <laughs> really clean energy um, at uh, this position and to stop using plastic so much. I don't want to get rid of plastics at all, to, to completely, but use it only when you really need it and reuse it again. I mean, I have water bottles. I bought them some time ago. And then I go to the well and fill it up. I don't know, maybe 10 times or so. And then I throw them away because after a while they get really a little bit strange, no? But uh, um, we have to reuse these things if we really need them. With bottles, yeah, when you have to carry also the, 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 the glass, it becomes a bit difficult. But what we don't need is that every little thing is wrapped up in plastic you know, in the, in the supermarkets and wherever. We don't and need now, that. now, now even worse than ever. Yeah, now, and also with like, Corona, that's worse oh, than ever. It's just like this morning I said, oh my God, you know, what am I going to do with those plastic bags? You know, it's like I was desperate, you know, because we, two or three months ago, I hardly had any more in the house, you know, except the, the recyclable bags that I buy for my composting, you know. And now, now it's like, oh, they're coming out of my ears. There's so many, because now you cannot even buy anything which is not in plastic, you know? Mm -hmm. Before I had my own bags that I would take, put things in. Oh, God. Now they don't let you even put things, your own grocery in your own bags, you know? Systematically they put it in plastic, you know? It's like, yeah, and all the gloves people wear and they throw them away immediately. Yeah. I put gloves on too, and then I put them two days in the sun or I leave them in my car. My car is in the sun and then I use it again. So, you know, uh, and all a friend of mine, she's a doctor and she says every time she sees a patient, she is doing this um, patients, corona patients who are still at home. And she has to completely change everything, you know, all this everywhere and throw away everything. So the increasing plastic uh, waste uh, with this fear of getting infected. I mean, doctors, they should be protected because they get too much viruses mm -hmm. at the time, you know? And the more you, you, you get, the, the more probability is that it is that you get infected strongly. But we normal people, when we don't really go into the vicinity of somebody who is spitting on you. And I mean, do we really need that? I don't know. Yeah, I, I you know, I think it's a, it, the, the only thing to be f fearful of is fear itself, <laughs> yeah. you know? And you can almost sense who is fearful when you walk around. All those people which have masks, even in the street, you know, mm. where, you know, really. Even on the bike, they have masks. Yeah. And I yeah. think, oops. Those are people who are just scared by nature. Anything would scare them, you know. So this is the latest thing that scares them, okay? Mm -hmm. But... There's so much work to be done to educate the world <laughs> on so many topics, you know. Yeah. And then it's also very difficult because when you come like a missionary, they won't listen. Yeah, they shoot the messenger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah on the topic of water, you know, I've been... Um, we have four now, 18 little bottles. They last us for a, for a week. And I go and fill them at the health food shop. You know, I, I buy the uh, reverse osmosis and I add the, uh, the essential minerals back in, you know, like the, because the water always has nothing left in it. Because here, 
they put chlorine and they put this um what is it like in, in, the, in fluoride. the fluoride 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 you know and this is like my god this is nuclear waste fluoride you know so dangerous but they put it in the water mm. supposedly you know to to, for, to have LCTs but really it's because I didn't know what to do with the nuclear waste and then they dumped <laughs> it in the water system that that well, was it, the it, original it, reason you know is it, is it really nuclear waste I thought um, it, it uh, it's the waste from producing aluminum Something like that, maybe not new. Yeah, there's a way product that didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. Okay, so let's use it for something. Okay, and uh, and everywhere in the U.S. you have it. We have it everywhere in Canada. You know, it's like so. It's I don't think we have this in Europe. At least in France, I was not no. I was not aware that we had fluoride. Oh, we but, had but you have it in almost every toothpaste. Um, I really went to check which toothpaste. I could, I would like to take without fluoride. And yeah. I think there are two or three, uh, uh, yeah. among 50 or something. You know? Yeah. I, I buy them in the health food shop also without, you know, mm -hmm. Let's make a special effort for that. Yeah. Uh, I would be interested in the re-energizing water. I, I saw a wonderful video also on YouTube from Victor, Victor Schauberger who lived in last century and he did a lot of research on water. I don't know, you should look that up, this uh, video. And he was a very inventive person. And he, the spiraling of water is energizing uh, uh, the water and so on. And I realized I have my own water, I have a well. I don't know how much it is uh, energized. I keep it, especially now when it's uh, going towards summer in, in containers, in big containers. So it's not, when it comes to me down here, it's not fresh, 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 fresh directly from the well because it, it wouldn't be enough uh, every day which comes out of the well. So I have to store it a little bit. And in, in summer, I always hope that I will make it. Now this year I should make it because no guests are coming. <laughs> so, because when guests are coming, then you have no control over their consumption of water. For me, it's not a problem. I have lived here with very little water and use even the tooth cleaning water for flowers. You know, that's, uh, I'm very aware of that, but people are not normally. Italians, mm -hmm. not at all. So, uh, I, so I, I'm now, I have, um, bought a filter for, for the bacteria because of when it is stored a, a week or so, I don't want to, in summer, to, to, you know, that it gets bad. But I would like to re, revitalize it. And so, uh, Aline, you said something. Uh, can you tell me a little more about, or even Ulrike, I don't know if you are... I, I don't know. I, I take the water from the tap and I use um, a silver pot, you know, to, f to fill the water in. I sometimes drink from silver cups, uh, which I made myself. <laughs> and um, what you could do is uh, put like um, Trommelsteine, you know, those, uh, those uh, rounded um, semi-precious stones like rose quartz and stuff uh, you can mm. put into the water and and let it sit for a couple of hours you know and then drink it um i i don't have uh, any machine to to um uh vitalize to, yeah it's an it's not only vitalizing but it, actually it, it's it's kind of a distilling machine I, I, but I don't know about it. I don't know about it. I, I drink the water from the tap. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I bought a, a, a copper, a copper container for the water. For, they say it's with Ayurveda, they use copper and not silver, but copper. But silver for, for the bacteria, mm -hmm. while it, copper it for something else. Uh, you like copper. Uh, I so, do. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 I, it was maybe... A, half a year ago or even longer that I felt I would have to, to wear uh, copper jewelry. And uh, after half a year, I, uh, I heard somebody talk about um, how, how, 
how important it is for us to wear copper to be more electrical to get the the activations from from the universe and and to to be in connection and um, uh, plus uh, copper is is um, anti bacteria bacteria yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now I have this little container of two and a half liters and every day or every two days maximum I put water in and a little bit of my lemon uh, peel and mm -hmm. drink this water. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies, I, I would like to stop. Oh, uh, yeah. Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It's uh, dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So good have night. a good time in the countryside and Elena, yeah. a good Thank time you. with your garden and we meet again. This Saturday is another possibility and then at least two weeks nothing because then I'm very, very busy. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This Saturday. I... Five o'clock our time. I, yeah. your time. I don't think so. Not Saturday. me either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the same that we I cannot get you together, you know. So yeah. <laughs> Okay. Have okay. a good time. Bye bye. Maybe another Thanks. Saturday, you know, because I'm also in on so many calls, you know. So maybe yeah. we skip it for a while and then we can make yeah. it on a Saturday if okay. that's more convenient. Okay. Thank you yeah. again, Heidi. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Be well, Alain. Be bye. well. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. I love you. I love, I love you. you. Yeah, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, was. Beautiful. Yeah. So we love you okay. and us. Bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>